So the unit is the wave nature of light. It's our fourth unit. We're going to talk about interference of water waves. This is section 9.3 in your textbook starting at page 462. So whenever we have uh, two waves that cross paths, um, and these waves are superimposed on top of each other, um, they interact in, in different ways. Um, so the interaction uh, between waves in the same medium is called interference. So if we're talking about the interaction of um, two waves in water, so two water waves, uh, that would be interference. Um, <clears throat> the interaction of uh, a, a, uh, a light wave with a water wave, we don't talk about that as being interference. So um, it says here, if the crest of one wave coincides with the crest of another, uh, the waves are in phase, and they create a resultant wave with a greater amplitude um, than each of the individual waves. So that's one thing that we see. Um, uh, if we have two crests kind of hitting each other, that we have a very large super crest, um, we call that constructive interference. So anytime um, the two waves are kind of adding together and making something greater is constructive interference. And at the point where we have um, uh, that constructive interference, the, the super crest, uh, we call it an antinode. And then if we have um, the waves that are slightly offset, so if they're out of phase by about half of a wavelength, then what happens is we have a trough. So if we have an amplitude of one wave, um, that's uh, above the uh, it, its equilibrium, and another wave that's below its equilibrium, and they create um, a point where there is destructive interference. So the sum of the two waves together um, adds up to zero or gets us close to zero, which is the equilibrium point for the waves. Uh, we have what's called destructive interference, and then we have a node occurring at that point. And when I talk about phase, in phase or out of phase, um, Two waves that are in phase uh, essentially have the same sort of sinusoidal pattern at, um, and they're at the same, uh, uh, they're at the same point in, in the wave. So they're either rising at the same time or falling at the same time uh, or at the equilibrium point at the same time for both waves. If they're out of phase, uh, one of them is shifted to the right or to the left slightly. So thinking back to your, your math courses, um, but we were dealing with trigonometric functions, uh, a sine wave and a uh, something that might be two times a sine wave. So if we have y equals sine of x and y equals two sine of x, those would both be in phase because they're both um, they're both sinusoidally moving up and down at the same sort of time. Uh, if we have um, uh, sine of x and another wave might be sine of x plus 3, those would also be in phase. But if we have uh, y equals sine of x and we have y equals sine of x minus 2, um, because the second wave is occurring at a, a point that's not the origin, a different point than the other wave, they're no longer in phase. So we call them out of phase. Another thing um, about interference is that uh, the waves um, have to be the same frequency and they have to have a fixed phase difference. So if that phase difference is constantly changing, so let's say we have a, um, uh, looking at the sine example again, if we have y equals sine of x for one wave and another wave being y equals um, sine of x minus another function that changes with time. Uh, we don't have a fixed phase difference anymore. And we have essentially waves that are what we call incoherent. So we don't see um, an interference pattern that is uh, something we can, we can make sense out of. We won't be able to tell what the two uh, what the two waves, we can't represent the two waves just by looking at their interference pattern, basically.
So waves that do meet that condition, so if the waves have the same frequency and they have a fixed phase difference, we call those coherent waves. So I'd like you to copy this down for interference. It's a phenomenon that occurs when two waves are in the same, in the same medium interact. Um, the waves must be coherent, meaning they have the same frequency, and they have a fixed phase difference. That phase difference doesn't change with time. We have constructive and we have destructive interference as well. So let's look at a um, situation where we have radial waves uh, that occur from two distinct points. So um, imagine that we're dropping two pebbles at the same time into a pool of water, of still water, at points S1 and S2. So this diagram below, it shows two point sources that are coherent. So they have the same frequency and they have the same phase. Um, their amplitudes are equal. And it show, this shows the successive wave fronts that travel out from the two sources um, and how they interfere with each other. So they produce this, some symmetrical patterns here. And um, those highlighted red dots, uh, those are the areas where we have constructive interference. That's where we have super crests occurring. So the amplitude at those points is two times the amplitude of one of the uh, waves initially. Um, then we have uh, uh, super troughs. So a super a constructive interference, I should have mentioned this earlier, can occur when we have two crests meeting or two troughs meeting. So a super trough um, will be, uh, its amplitude will be minus 2a. Those are the antinodes, the dot highlighted in red dots. Those, uh, those dots that are not highlighted in are the nodes. This is where the water at this point will, will appear to be still. And it'll basically be, everything else will be vibrating in phase around it, but those nodal uh, points will be still, points of still water. Now what we end up having uh, with these patterns is we have, you can see lines that sort of radiate out as well. Uh, so we'll have lines of destructive interference. These are sometimes called nodal lines in lines of constructive interference or antinodal lines. And then we have super crest lines and super trough lines, but we won't get into that, uh, that detail. So that's what this is, pattern is showing us uh, when we have two waves that radiate out from uh, two points that are uh, relatively near each other. And the rest of this is just basically going to, cop the, going to repeat what I was just saying. I kind of said everything as well. So if you need to, you can read that slide. Um, so just to talk about this a little bit more, it says, what happens to the pattern when the frequency increases? So if we increase the frequency of those waves, uh, those nodal and antinodal lines end up kind of coming together. And uh, the number of nodal and antinodal lines increases. But the symmetry of the pattern is the same. All we really see is, um, if we look back to this image, uh, the lines will be spread out uh, um, at a certain point uh, or a certain way, but if we increase the frequency of, F, uh, uh, of the wave source S1, S2, we end up seeing the lines converging together. Another thing says, what if we, we move those two source points farther away from each other? Or, I'm sorry, uh, move them uh, closer to each other. And if they're really close to each other, uh, the same sort of thing happens. The nodal lines end up um, the nodal and the antinodal lines come to closer together. Um, we see more nodal and antinodal lines, but the symmetry of the pattern is constant as well. So if we um, change the phase of one of the sources, we end up seeing um, a shift in the pattern. Um, the number of nodal lines will be the same but uh, it, it will be a, a different pattern. It's no longer constant in terms of what the pattern looks like. Now mathematically, um, these are some equations we can use to, uh, uh, to analyze interference patterns. And there is a, a worksheet, it's quite long, um, and there's a, quite a bit of questions on it, but I want you to try them all. Um, this worksheet goes into this a little bit more in depth as well, so please read that. But I'll go through each of these equations to kind of explain what they are. Um, the, the one on the left, uh, 
uh, is basically saying it's the uh, so the the absolute value of PNS1 minus PNS2, so the distance between them taken as a positive, um, where PNS1 is the distance from uh, source 1 to a, a point on a nodal line, and PNS2 is the distance from uh, uh, source 2 to that point on the nodal line. Uh, so basically if we're looking at a, um, if we're looking at an interference pattern, um, PN will be a point, it will be one of those nodes or antinodes, one of those little circles or one of those um, uh, highlighted in red dots. Uh, and uh, the distance um, from uh, S, or I guess the, the PNS1 is the distance from PN to S1 and PNS2 is the distance from um, PN to S2. Uh, we subtract that distance. Um, that will always be equal to um, N minus one half times the wavelength, where the n is the nodal line number. And uh, those nodal lines, um, uh, the, the number of the nodal line is important because uh, if we go back to, let me go back to this image here. Our first nodal line is uh, the line that is V. So we have, I guess, we, I can't show you with my mouse here, but um, we have this straight line of red dots coming down the middle. So that's the vertical red line. That's our first antinodal line. The first nodal lines are the two nodal lines on the left and the right of that. Then uh, the second nodal lines are the second appearance of those lines where we have those, those unfilled in circles. So we count our nodal line, um, and there are always, uh, there's always two of them. So there's one that's closer to the source one and one that's closer to the source two. Um, we count the nodal lines as uh, uh, the first ones occur uh, directly to the right and left of the um, of the first antinodal line. That first antinodal line is always the straight vertical line. So those filled in dots that create that straight line, that's where we would have that, uh, that antinodal line. Okay, going back to the equations, um, our next equation, sine of uh, theta n, so this theta n in this case is the angle to the antinodal line. So um, uh, the angle to our first um, uh, nodal line, or sorry, antinodal line, I should say, the angle to our first antinodal line, that straight line, is zero. So that straight line of, of constructive interference is zero. But um, the angle to the first antinodal line will be the same. It'll be the same on the left as it is on the right. It's the same angle. And to find that angle, um, we could analyze the mathematics and we'll see that sine of that angle is equal to the, the n minus 1 half times lambda over d, where n is the number of the nodal line, lambda is, of course, the wavelength, and d is the distance between the sources. So it's basically that d is um, uh, the distance from s1 to s2, taken always as a positive. Um, another equation, uh, we have sine of uh, theta prime n, uh, and that is uh, xn over L. So in this case, the xn is the, is the perpendicular uh, distance from the right angle bisector to point P on the nth nodal line. And L is the distance from point P to a, the midpoint between the two sources. So um, L is half of S1 minus S2, always as a positive. Um, and uh, Xn, um, so it's the uh, so it's the perpendicular distance from the right bisector to point P on the nth nodal line. 
So we basically have to create a line from the nth nodal line, whichever nth nodal line we're examining, um, and create a, um, a parallel, uh, sorry, a perpendicular line um, to that point. Uh, and the distance from that line uh, divided by that halfway distance uh, between S1 and S2, um, we can find out what um, uh, theta prime n is uh, by finding the sine of, of that, or the inverse sine of, of that ratio. So I will let you try the, the questions on the worksheet as well as the other questions that are assigned. Um, if you're having any problems with this, the majority of the learning you'll get is from, from trying out these problems. So please uh, send me an email or respond on our message board. I will help you as best as I can. Um, there is not a, uh, a quiz for quite a long time because this is going to take a bit of time to understand. So uh, please, if you have any difficulty, let me know and I will help you.